everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk, Civic Tech and Asian Perspective. My name is Wei Yu. I am an associate professor working at Department of Communications and New Media, Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences at the National University of Singapore. I'm also the director of the Civic Tech Lab. The lab had a, a long history dated back to uh, 2008, but we only recently launched its website thanks to the generous support from two grantors. So here I'd like to acknowledge their support. First is a US OTPRT collaborative grant, uh, which enabled this uh, Civic Tech in Asia project. Um, I also want to thank NUS, a University of Sydney Partnership Grant, uh, which allowed us to explore uh, civic tech um, from an Asian Pacific perspective, adding Australia to our research sites. Um, the Civic Tech Lab, as I said, um, has been there for a while, but it was only recent that we were able to come up with this website. Uh, you're welcome to check out uh, our web website and see whether some of the research projects we do interest you, and you're welcome to contact me for any potential collaborations. Other than our website, we have two other channels where you can find interesting content. One is our Twitter channel, Civic Tech L, and the other one is our YouTube channel, The Civic Tech Lab. There have been some very exciting, and I think, uh, videos uploaded to this channel. Uh, for those of you who don't know this web, allow me to play a short video to uh, introduce uh, our uh, lab to you. What is Civic Tech? Civic Tech refers to solutions that involve information and communication technologies to benefit citizens. Who are we? We are academics researching and facilitating civic tech processes and technologies. Our vision. We envision taking an interdisciplinary, cross-sectoral and collaborative approach to tackling civic challenges. Our missions. Generate the highest quality research about civic technology. Strengthen the civic core of public sector, private sector actors and citizens. Design critical processes and technologies for the public good. Our team, Civic Tech Lab at National University of Singapore is a research hub. Our team includes social scientists, computer scientists, and digital cultural analysts. Our history, the Civic Tech Lab, formerly known as the Media Psychology Lab, was established in 2008 as a central location for research projects on civic engagement and information communication technology. Our focus, Civic Tech in Asia, Citizen Science, online deliberation, digital culture. Our home, www.civictechlab.org. So before I start, uh, I'd like to first uh, introduce the concept or the term of civic technology. The definition I introduce here is not necessarily academic nor um, normative. So uh, civic tech here, uh, the understanding of it comes from how the practitioners who claim that they are doing civic tech understand this particular term. So in this term, there are two words. The second word, technology, uh, is actually quite straightforward. Uh, technology here often refers to information and the communication technology that became readily available to the public in the later half of the 20th century. So this basically refers to the internet, mobile phones, and all kinds of uh, technologies built upon that. Um, what uh, seems to be controversial is actually the definition or understanding of civic. So what is a civic? I tried to um, layer it, the uh, stand, understanding of the word into a, a, a hierarchy, right? a three-layered hierarchy. On the bottom of the hierarchy, you see that, uh, you know, the uh, people who are doing civic tech think that as long as the tech is for the citizens, then the tech can be called civic tech. For the citizens, uh, seems to be uh, straightforward, but it involves uh, some disagreements uh, point as well. Uh, for instance, who are citizens? Uh, are immigrants, especially illegal immigrants, the citizens? Uh, are public servants, citizens? How can we define uh, who deserve or qualified to be called citizens? 
Well, when we say for the citizens, most of the time we assume that we are trying to benefit the citizens. We are trying to bring something that is good for the citizens. But the controversial point is who can define what is really good for the citizens, right? Uh, who can make the decisions? Well, uh, the second layer of this uh, hierarchy of the concepts uh, focused on by citizens, the engagement of citizens in building and developing uh, civic tech. So when we talk about engaging citizens, right, uh, the natural question is how, how do we engage the citizens? In what manners? From uh, which kind of uh, channels? Right? So at the top of the pyramid, right, we see democratic engagement. It refers to a particular uh, way of engaging citizens. Uh, well, even we say uh, democratic uh, engagement, there are different kinds of uh, democratic models as well, right? Um, in electoral uh, democracy, it most likely means that the citizens will elect the delegates who can represent their views in making the decisions regarding civic attack, right? Uh, we also have other models of democracies such as a deliberative democracy, whereas um, the citizens are expected to actually rationally discuss with each other in order to reach the decisions. So as you can see now, um, civic tech, um, regardless whether um, uh, people disagree with uh, the definition of civic, um, well, we have seen a lot of uh, civic tech practices or civic tech initiatives uh, across the globe. So the phenomenon is truly global and across the sectoral. Um, you know, if you look at this aggregation site, Civic Talk Dots Guide, uh, the site uh, already collected over 4,000 civic tech cases or initiatives. And uh, these initiatives uh, actually come from uh, different kinds of actors. Uh, through our research, we uh, decided to rightly uh, uh, categorize these uh, civic tech uh, initiatives into first the Gov tech basically technologies built by the government to uh, interact or to engage citizens or to serve citizens. Second type of uh, uh, civic tech is CSO tech, uh, so civil society organization tech or NGO tech, techs used to help CSOs to do their job. Lastly, we have civic tech entities. So these are organizations that primarily use uh, civic technology tools to solve the problems to reach their goals. Okay, now uh, it's time for me to introduce to you several interesting examples that represent each of the three categories of civic tech. All right, so uh, we uh, actually uh, held an ICT for Good in Asia workshop in November last year. And in this workshop, we featured a, a number of very interesting cases to illustrate the variety or the diversity of civic tech initiatives. So I drew my examples from this uh, workshop. Uh, the first kind of uh, um, civic tech is definitely GAF tech. So uh, governments actually have uh, designed numerous pieces of civic technology. Some of these technologies are aimed to help the government agencies, the government departments themselves to run faster and more smoother with, best co with better coordinations among different departments. Uh, and in our workshop, Yang Ling, uh, the director in digital design and development from Singapore's GovTech, has uh, introduced several great examples. For instance, here uh, there's a system called Booking SG. This Booking SG is a booking system that's uh, open to uh, government officials. So the government officials can book facilities in different parts of the governmental offices uh, to share resources, right? To make the best out of the existing facilities. Well, some of the other GovTechs are actually facing the citizens and directly engage uh, with uh, citizens, providing services to them. Uh, this uh, example comes from the sort of a series of uh, information websites uh, called XGoWell, right? So in Singapore, um, these information websites uh, tell citizens where to go for different kinds of resources, such as where to go for masks, where to go for vaccinations, where uh, to go for uh, clinics that treat 
COVID diseases, so on and so forth, right? So uh, GovTech uh, apparently has been doing a lot in the space of civic tech. Now, let me continue to the second type of uh, civic tech. CSO tech here refers to technologies that can help civil society organizations, right? such as NGOs, or charities, to do their job better. Um, in our workshop, we have Dong Xie, the Secretary General uh, from NGO2.0.cn. Uh, uh, so NGO2.0 is a typical example of CSO uh, tech. NGO2.0 uh, helps uh, in promoting uh, ICT uh, usage and implementation implementations in NGOs in China. Um, the entity was uh, established by uh, MIT professor Wang Jing as early as in 2009. So NGO 2.0 is a national organization. It helps NGOs all over the China to uh, adopt and use information technologies. So those uh, technologies NGO 2.0 has promoted uh, included you know, building uh, NGO data sets from the entire country, uh, drafted a digital map featuring different kinds of NGOs uh, um, in this uh, big country. Um, and uh, NGO 2.0 also developed uh, digital tools, uh, provided training to more than 3,000 NGOs us from China in learning how to use uh, these uh, so-called 2.0 tools. Uh, NGO 2.0 also were involved in running hackathons to help NGOs uh, to get their problems solved. Right? So this is a typical example of a CSO tech. Um, the last type of uh, civic tech entity, uh, I call them uh, purely civic tech entities. Right? So if CSO tech uh, still aims to empower CSOs, right? uh, these the civic tech entities uh, primarily rely on a, a digital tool right, to solve the problems. Uh, so they often do not really exist before the tools are uh, designed or completed. So in, in our workshop, we had Nashin uh, Matani. Uh, she is the director of Yayasan Pata Bankana Disaster Map Foundation. So uh, this uh, Disaster Map Foundation was based uh, in Indonesia. And uh, their main uh, work is to develop software infrastructures for community-led disaster co-management. So in this picture, you see the platform they have built for real-time reporting about floods right, in Indonesia. Uh, ordinary people can actually uh, use this platform to report the severity or instances of floods in their neighborhoods. So they can upload pictures, they can leave comments. There will be also a team of people verifying these inputs. So this kind of map has been helpful, very helpful in saving lives during these uh, sudden disasters. The map was now used in Philippines and Vietnam. Uh, well, if you still remember the live saving Excel sheet during the Henan flooding last year, you can imagine if those uh, people or volunteers uh, who had uh, can have access to a map like this, to a tool like this, maybe uh, their uh, life-saving efforts can be even more uh, efficient and successful, okay? So that's another uh, type of civic tech uh, entities. Uh, well, uh, other than these uh, specific organizations aiming to uh, solve particular problems, uh, we also have uh, what we call uh, the community building civic tech entities. These are also very important uh, uh, type of civic tech entities. So um, FOSS Asia stands for uh, Free and Open Source Software Asia uh, is such an organization. Uh, in our workshop, we invited the co-founder of the organization, Hong Fadal, to join our uh, presentations. So Hong herself is from Vietnam and uh, uh, she fund, since she funded Force Asia in 2009, uh, Force Asia has organized the numerous uh, events, including uh, the yearly very influential summits for the community members. Uh, they also in, uh, organized workshops, uh, projects, programs 
to uh, basically help the community uh, members to know each other and to work with each other. Um, the most important thing is um, whatever they do, they do it through open source tools. Even their biggest event, the Force Asia Summit, um, you know, is completely organized through open source platform. The event uh, actually features hundreds of talks. So the open source platforms was actually quite effective. Um, all right, um, I think I have given you some uh, senses about the definition, the practical definition of civic tech and different types of uh, civic technologies you can see in the practice space.